Okay, let's start today's session. In the last session, the last topic that we covered was related to the properties of unconditional demand function and also supply function. But in this session, we are uh, learning about profit maximization and cost minimization. But first of all, in order to know the profit maximization, we need to know the profit function and its related properties. When we define our profit function, the profit should be a function of output price and input prices. Should be the function of output prices and input prices. And when we are going to maximize this profit function, in our profit there is two important elements, which is our revenue and our cost. Which the revenue is equal to P, which is the output price, multiplied by the our output amount. And this output amount is itself as a function of some input. The output, or Y, is a function of some inputs. Then instead of revenue or R, we can simply write down P multiplied by F of X. P multiplied by F of X. And also, our cost is simply equal to the price of inputs multiplied by the input bundle that we have. So both of them here, W is input prices vector. W is a vector of input prices, and also X is a vector of input. A vector of inputs. So for example, when we have two inputs in our production process, then the C will take this format, which is equal to W1, X1 plus W2, X2. But in a general term, if we assume that we have n inputs, n number of inputs, we just simply write down as a vector value, which is W as an input prices vector and X is a vector of inputs. So then, instead of cost, we just simply write down WX. W, which is vector of input prices, and X is, which is the vector of inputs. And also, from the last class, when we maximized the profit, when we had at the profit maximization process, when we are going to maximize, we found out a value of demand, which was a function of P and W, which we called that demand as an unconditional factor demand function. So this unconditional factor demand function is also as a factor of output prices and input prices. So finally, when we write down here that profit is a function of output price and input price, we can get it from here. You see, P, P, W, W, P, W. So finally, this profit is a function of output prices, which is this P, this P, and this P and also as a function of input prices, which is this W, this one, and this one. So finally, we got our profit function as a function of output prices and input prices. So this is the profit function. But we have some specific properties for the profit function. The first properties is that the partial derivative of profit with respect to Every input prices, any input prices, which is WI, stand for the price of input for the input I. When our input is equal to I, this WI is the price of input I. So then when we take the partial derivative of our profit function, which is this one, with respect to WI, is less than and equal to zero. What does it mean? It means when the price of an input increase, so the profit level 
would decrease. The profit level would decrease. And what is the reason when the input price increase, the profit would decrease? Because, for example, when WI, which is the input price, increase, then as a result of increasing input price, as a result of increasing input price, our cost will increase. And we know that our profit is a function of revenue minus cost. So when the value of the cost or the amount of the cost increase, so it means if the revenue is fixed, so some fixed amount minus some now higher amount of cost, so finally the profit level would decrease. That's why when take, we take the partial derivative of profit function with input price, it's less than or equal to zero. Maybe there's sometimes no change, but most of the times our profit will reduce. But next, when we take the partial derivative of our profit function with respect to output prices, our profit will increase. So it means the uh, partial derivative of profit with respect to output price is greater than and equal to zero. Why? Because when our P or output price increase, so as a result, we know that revenue is equal to output price multiplied by the output amount, then revenue would increase. As a result, our profit would increase. So this is the result that why the input price has a negative effect on profit, but the output price increase has a positive effect on our profit. And next properties is that our profit function, which is a function of output prices and input prices, is homogeneous of degree one in output and input prices. In output and input prices. What does it mean? It means when we increase both input prices and output prices with the same value. Both input prices and output prices with the same value, then our profit function would be homogeneous of degree one. So the proof, it follows from the homogeneity of degree zero of our supply function and our condition, unconditional demand function. So because this profit is a as a result of profit maximization, then when we get our unconditional demand function and also our supply function, when they are homogeneous of degree zero, because they are somehow as a result of profit maximization, which is as a result of first order condition. When the first order condition is homogeneous of degree one, then the own function should be homogeneous of degree, when the first order condition is homogeneous of degree zero, then the own function should be homogeneous of degree one, HD of one because we are taking a partial derivative, so the, the power will reduce by one. For example, when we have something, revenue is some function of price and output, then when we take the partial derivative of revenue with respect to y, then p multiplied by y, one minus one, so one value will reduce. One value will reduce. Then we will have P multiplied by Y to the power of zero. You see here, Y is the power of one. But when we take the partial derivative, then Y would change to the power of zero. As this supply function and condition, unconditional demand function, because they are as a result of partial derivative of profit, when they are homogeneous of degree, degree zero, then the profit function itself should be homogeneous of degree one, because there is one power change. So then the next uh, properties that we have is this one. Our profit function is convex in output prices and input prices. 
how we can define this one? It means for example, this is our set. When we are talking about convex set, it means when two points is in our set, for example, this is suppose this is point one or x one, and this is point two or x two. When we connect these two points, any point between these two is also in this set. When x1 and x2 in this set, a convex set is a set that any point which connect these two points is also in this set. So any point, any point which connect these two values is also in this set. So this is the convex set. And here, when you are talking about that our profit is convex in output prices and input prices, we can prove like this. Consider the two price vector, which we, is the output price and input price. One combination, another combination, which is P prime and W prime. And for every scholar of some lambda, which is this, including zero and one. So the P double prime is equal to lambda multiplied by P plus one minus lambda multiplied by P prime. So to, suppose that this is, This is our P, and this is our P prime, and this is our P double prime, our P double prime. Convex set is a set when the P and P prime is included in this set, the P double prime which connect these two points is also included in this set. And we have the similar rationalization for our input prices. When the W and W prime, for example, now suppose P is W and P prime is W prime, then uh, W double prime is also included in this set. So how we can prove that? So let's now, we define our profit as a function of this P double prime and W double prime, not as a function of P prime and W prime or uh, P and W or W prime and P prime, but as a function of P double prime and W double prime. So it will change to this value. So we have instead of P now, and our function P double prime, so you know that this is our Y value. But this Y is a function of P prime now and W prime now. And here, instead of W, which we have in our cost, part of our profit function, we write down W double prime, because now profit is a function of P double prime and W double prime. And instead of X, P, W, again, we write down X as a function of P double prime and W double prime. So now, we know that this P double prime is equal to this value, and W double prime is equal to this value. Then instead of P double prime, write the value, lambda P plus one minus lambda P prime. And instead of W here, W double prime, write down the value, which is lambda W plus one minus lambda W prime. So then we will have two parts here. One is this part. And one is this part. And from this two combination here, we know that P is our output price, but this one, if X as a factor of, as a uh, function of P double prime and W double prime, will change to something like Y, P double prime, and W double prime. And we have a minus term here, minus, then we have W multiplied by our X, which is unconditional demand function as a factor of, as a function of P double prime and W double prime. So here, 
you know that if we have p double prime, so this would be our pi double prime. But now we have p and w. P and W, but multiplied by P double prime, W double prime, P double prime, W double prime. And also, we have one multiplier here, which is our lambda. And again, we, he we have here one minus lambda multiplied by P prime, W by our Y, as a function of P double prime and W double prime then we have w prime, then x as a function of p double prime and w double prime. So now we have a kind of two combination of our profit. Two combination of our profit. So this one is p, p double prime, w double prime, w, p double prime, and w double prime with just some lambda term. So then, now we have higher prices. For example, we have higher prices, then our P. Because when P is here, then P double prime, which is between P and P prime, then P double prime is greater than P. And W double prime is greater than W. Then the profit that we receive from P multiplied by this value and this value it should be less than and equal to this profit. It should be less than and equal to this profit. And also, we have this part from this uh, like segment of our this uh, mathematical way. Then we have another profit, which is now this profit is a function of p prime and w prime. This p prime and this w prime. So here we write down this function as a function of this p, as a function of this p and this w, here, as a function of p and w. But here we write down as a function of this p prime and this w prime, which is this part and this part. But we are talking about this one. So then finally, when we get some profit from our p double prime, and W double prime is less than and equal to this lambda multiplier to our profit function, then we have P and W multiplied by one minus W, then multiplied by pi P double prime, W double prime. So what does it mean? It means basically when we have one profit here, one profit here, any other profit in between is also in this set. So that's why it's called this convex and output prices and input prices. So this is the, the proof for that one. So it's a little bit com complicated. So if we practice, then we will know what's going on here. So I hope that you practice, then we will know more about this one.